person. My favorite designer is Hohi Locatelli. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's hard to pick one, it's not fair. I think I made that rule up myself, but I'm picking one and it's Hohi Locatelli. My name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to the 33rd episode of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, September 24th, and it is another hot day here in Dallas. Our temperature went down and then it came back up again. So we're not in the hundreds anymore, but it's still really hot and like kind of humid for around here. <laughs> so um, I am looking forward to a break from the heat, but I did manage to wear something knitted today to work. So I am wearing my So Faded sweater, which is a sweater pattern by Andrea Mowry. I made a couple modifications. I split the hem on mine and that's mostly because I picked the wrong size. It's pretty small up here, um, but also just because I have a very A-line figure and needed some increases there and the pattern didn't have any. So by the time I realized that, I needed to split the hem, so it turned out fine. Um, I also decided to, um, I did the garter for the sleeves, but then I decided to um, stop it at a sleeve cap. And so all I did was, a, I think, a few extra rows of garter and then bound off pearl-wise so I could keep that garter pattern going. But this is all um, Wool and Boone colors. You can find all the colors on my Ra Ravelry project page and my Ravelry um, page is linked below. Okay, let's dive into some whips because I don't have any finished objects this week. Um, so starting off with my longest standing whip here, not like ever, but like currently working on, um, I am still working on my Like a Cloud Cardi by Hohi Locatelli and it's all tangled up because it was here in the project bag, but it is, I, I put a few rows on it this week, so I'll show it to you. I'm, mid row here. I am still working on the ribbing there on the bottom. You can see my cute little progress keeper here from Simply Serving. It's a monster book of monsters from Harry Potter. So yeah, I just did like almost an inch this week. Um, I think I did that on Friday night when I was just looking for some relaxing knitting, but I'm using Shibui. I'm using Silk Cloud and Seema held together and that is a pattern that has been very popular and I've been working on this sweater for quite a while but it's still bringing me a lot of joy even though I only get a few rows in on it every week. The other thing that I have been working on um, is my Whispers in the Wind socks. Hi Toaster! Just came down the stairs. So I am knitting the Whispers in the Wind socks by Kay, the crazy sock lady. And you can see I have not done much more than I had last week. This is like my week of things I almost knitted on. <laughs> um, I meant to do a ton of knitting on these socks this weekend when we went to um, a football game, but I am proud of myself because I sat through the entire game and didn't knit a stitch the whole football game we were there in person and that was mostly because i was really into the game but also because it was hot and we were cramped um a lot of times when we go to football games if we have room even if it's hot i will still knit um but yeah so i am down on the foot now i've done the heel since last week and i am working on the foot and that same pattern just continues on um i really like this pattern it's very um intuitive and readable. The what makes it readable is because you've got these like garter ridges and so you know you can count so many garter ridges before you make the next twist pattern and I think that is really really smart. Um, so I've been able to carry these around and I will continue to carry them around with me and hopefully finish them up um, kind of soon because I'm eager to cast on some new socks. I also need to cast on something that is really simple that I could work on like in the dark and stuff. Okay, so what I've really been putting my time into this week, 
it clearly wasn't those other two whips, is I have been working on a design. So I am mid, like partially into this design and I probably won't always show my partial designs, but I do wanna show you what I've been working on um, today. Know that this is not a completed design and things could change. Also know that it's going to be a couple months before this pattern is ready to be released. So um, I'm so excited because I am working with Connie who is Chili Knits. If you have never seen her yarn before, you should definitely go check her out. I'll put her Instagram handle below, but she makes the brightest and most fun colors. You can tell just from her label that she is all about color. So Connie lives in Chile, or I'm sure that's a very American way to say it, or Chile. Um, but she is Chili Knits, and it's Knits with a Z, which is a super cute name. So um, she asked me if I would be interested in, in designing um, a shawl. And so I said yes, and she sent me a beautiful trio of colors. So I've got those three colors here, and I will show them to you. So I'm working on my um, design here out of my float tote because I've got three colors. So this is the float tote um, original float tote pattern and it's the three skein size which you can find in my Ravelry store and also in my Etsy shop. Okay so the three colors are okay the first one is gold digger. I don't know what got on there. Gold digger and that is this color and it is so nice. And then the second one, I can't, I'm not sure, I think this might be like Carib, like Caribbean, maybe, because this color is so blue, <laughs> I think that's what it is. Um, and then the third color is like the wow factor color, snapping those back in here. Ah, they have snaps on the bottom. The third color is, I think you say it gaudy, and that is this super fun color here. So I will do a lot more explaining about the origin of this pattern, the inspiration and everything when I do my love letter video and a little bit when I finish it. But I just wanna show you what I've been working on this week because I'm so excited about it. So this is going to be a triangular shawl and it is um, my, I would say my most com complex design yet. Um, not saying that it's gonna be difficult or anything, it just includes some higher level skills. And one of those skills is mosaic knitting. And it's not something that I have a lot of practice with, so I've had to do a lot of research and like work out the kinks. So that hopefully by the time you get the pattern, if you're a new mosaic knitter, it will be easy breezy for you. So this is what I have so far, and I love it so much. I keep looking at it, like, especially when I'm at work, I'll bring this to work. I don't get to work on it while I'm at work. I just bring it and I look at it and it makes me smile. <laughs> but this is, this is what I've got so far. You can see you've got a triangle coming on here and we have some really fun color work. But what's really cool about this is that it's mosaic knitting. And mosaic knitting is a way to do color work without having to carry the two colors across the row. So you actually will use one color, you will knit with it and slip everything that's supposed to be the other color, and then return across the row. And I'm gonna explain this like way better in the pattern and I'll have a video. But then you take the second color and you go across and all those stitches that you slipped, you will knit them. And it is maybe slightly more time consuming because you have to make two passes for each row, but it's nice not to have to carry two yarns across the row, especially if you are not comfortable like holding the yarns in both hands. So I've been having a lot of fun working that out. I'm excited to start on my next section here, um, hopefully in a little bit, but there's a little teaser for you. I don't know when I'll show more of that again. Maybe next week, I don't know yet, I haven't decided, um, but I am very, very excited to be working with Connie of Chili Knits and to be getting that pattern um, hopefully worked on and sorted and finished up here in the next few weeks. So since this is a relatively light knitting content episode, I'm gonna go into the Ask Me thread on Ravelry and answer a few questions that have been 
um, in there for a little bit. So I have three different people that I am answering today. Um, the first is, I think, Mishbella or Michelle, Mishbella17. Um, she says, hey, Natalie, I love your podcast. I know you're planning on doing a fiber art in public uh, video coming up and wondered if you could include showing up at your local yarn store and crocheting since you used to work at one. Toaster. Um, I'm not anxious at all about crocheting in public or work, but I'm so intimidated about showing up at my local yarn store and just crocheting while I wait for my husband to come back for me. So that's part one of the question. So I will answer that first. <laughs> you gonna be okay, bud? He's just whining and whining. Okay, so a few kind of tips about um, either knitting or crocheting at your local yarn store. Um, it can be hard to go to a new shop with new people and interact there because we've all had different um, experiences at yarn stores and other stores that are like uh, fiber arts related. Um, Sometimes the owners of the store or the employees there might not make you feel welcome right, right away. Um, sometimes that's because you just have to warm up to them. Either you do or they have to warm up to you. And it's just a, you know, that's how we as people interact. We're not always going to like just jive right away. And that can be really, really nerve wracking. Um, to go into a new shop and ho and you know you plan to spend a couple hours there especially if somebody's dropping you off and not picking you up for a couple hours what will you do if you don't get along with them um but i in my experience i have worked at a, a yarn store before i've actually worked at a couple different yarn stores and in my experience even though it might be awkward at first if you just come in and sit down at the table where people are knitting or crocheting if you just stand and get through those like 15 awkward minutes, you're gonna be so happy that you stayed. Um, you'll find somebody that you have like a connection with, like something small. I mean, you're probably, if you're in their local yarn store, gonna connect with local people that know, you know, some of the same um, restaurants or areas or events going on that you do. And as soon as that happens, it's like the ice is broken and it kind of goes into a more comfortable conversation. So it can be really scary, um, especially if you're just kind of an introvert and you don't like, you know, striking up the small talk. You want to just get right to like being friends with people. I totally get that because I don't enjoy that either. Um, but if you just get in there and get through the awkward phases, you're gonna be just fine. Um, another thing I would suggest if you're going to participate in a local yarn store's knit or crochet night, um, this is something that I have started doing since hearing, or since having an experience where I went to a shop and getting told that you can only work with stuff that you've bought at this store and I was traveling and that kind of I, I didn't really like that and that's my personal opinion I feel like the local yarn store is a place where um, or can be if the owner chooses a place where people come to gather and in that communal like gathering that's where you get and earn the trust of your best customers but I feel like that has to come first before um you know, I, I just, I don't know. I don't like it if, if that's a shop policy, but I will respect the shop policy because I understand for some people that having other yarns in there drives away business from their shop. So what I've started doing before I go to a local like knit night, if it's in a, in a yarn store, if it's in a public place, who cares? But if it's in a yarn store, um, you can call the yarn shop ahead of time and just ask them if they have any policies surrounding their um, knit night. Sometimes they'll say, no, just come, like come hang out. That's like the best answer you can hear. Sometimes I might say, um, not really, but we just ask that you like, don't bring any food totally understandable around yarn. Um, you can specifically ask, do you have a policy about yarn? And they might say, um, we prefer if you ha if you knit um, our stuff, or we prefer that you're a customer here um, at some point, t if you come to our knit shop, totally get that. Um, but 
I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm getting too fired up about it. But if you call and you ask and you know ahead of time, then you can go in there with the comfort knowing that at least your relationship with the shop, you've respected that and they will have respect for you. And then you just have to you know, get in there and make some friends. Um, but don't shy away from the opportunity to find, meet local people. Um, it's, it's really, really fun and exciting. And I just, I love doing it. I love, I will drive all the way up to McKinney, which is an hour from my house and hang out with the people in that store. Usually I go with a, a friend that I have known for years, but we always like meet somebody new and it's really fun. Okay. So the second part of Michelle's question, she asked if I have ever done any Tunisian crochet. She says, I love, I'd love for you to teach us some Tunisian crochet. That was my 2019 fiber art goal and I haven't really jumped in yet. You know, I need to jump into Tunisian crochet because I've seen so many amazing Tunisian patterns and I've only done it for one project. I made a set of washcloths and I really didn't enjoy it. Um, I like the Tunisian techniques, but what I didn't like was I chose I think a too small of a hook for the yarn that I was using because it was dishcloth cotton. So I didn't really enjoy that feeling. And then also I really like the Clover um, Amour hooks. And to my knowledge, I don't think there's a Tunisian set that has the same head like shape and um, kind of metal feel to it. Um, without, like I feel like a lot of Tunisian sets are plastic, which I don't enjoy, or um, that old squeaky metal, <laughs> like a boy hook. And I know there's so many people who love like the boy and Susan Bates aluminum needles or hooks, but I just don't, I can't do those. And um, I've also seen wooden, which I just cannot seem to crochet with wooden hooks. So maybe I just need to give it a second try, but um, Tunisian is also on my list. So no tutorials right now because I am not doing it. But as soon as I find a good set and a good um, pattern, there's tons of good patterns out there. I think that's something that's on my list um, to try soon. Okay, she had one more question and it, I lost it. Here we go. She said, are there any crochet patterns that you stumbled upon lately that you're thinking about starting? I would think once you jump, jump into designing, it takes up so much time. Yes, um, it does. It takes up a lot of brain space too. That's why my whips are like, get a teeny bit of work on them every week. And why I knit a lot of socks because I can do that on the go. And then when I'm home, I'm pretty much working on a design. It just depends. Um, I'm hoping to lighten my load a little bit and just have a little more flexibility with my schedule um, here soon after I finish up um, this Chili Knits designs or design. <laughs> Oh my gosh, but I'm having a lot of fun with it too and I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it. So as far as any crochet patterns that I've seen out there lately, I am friends with a bunch of people on Instagram that are crochet designers. I don't know how we got together because I'm like the sole knitter in these groups of crochet designers and <laughs> I don't know, they accept me for who I am and that I do a lot of knitting. I do, I do crochet design too, but um, I am heavily knit in a knitting mode right now, but these designer friends that I've made are doing so many amazing crochet designs. So a couple of people that I really um, think are putting out some awesome patterns are uh, by Stephanie Aaron. She is putting out like a garment pattern a month and they are so creative, so innovative, and so different. If you haven't checked out by Stephanie Aaron, you need to go see what she is doing because her patterns are so cool. They definitely make me want to like jump on board with that. Um, another couple people that I am, I will not claim to be friends with. They are like definitely role models out there in the crochet design world is, um, I think it's called All About Ami. And I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she just put out either a published, like she either just published the pattern or just put out a teaser for this really beautiful cardigan. It's so simple. It looks so clean. And that's something that I'm keeping my eye on because I think I would really love to make that. And then one more person, um, Woods and Wool, also blanking on her name right now. Um, but she puts out some stuff that's some garment patterns and accessories that are really just kind of in the aesthetic that I think I want to be in. 
I seem to keep being like color and crazy and fun, but then sometimes I like to be simple and clean lines and neutral. And that's where Woods and Wool is. And so I really like her, um, her designs. She's got a cardigan cow going on right now, I think. And she just came out with a really simple shawl that's so beautiful. Um, so yeah, those are a few designers that I think are putting out some really awesome things right now and I am definitely keeping my eye on. All right, a few more questions here. And let's see, the next person is, um, I think the username is Scrap Fairy. It's either Scrap Fair or Scrap Fairy. Um, but this is Charity, and Charity has a couple questions. Um, and also a crocheter. She says, I'm a crochet noob, and I'm currently working on a granny square raglan sweater that I've been obsessed with for the last couple years and I've finally gotten the hang of it without turning, just turning my attempts into yarn bricks. Okay, first of all, Charity, if you're making a granny square raglan sweater, I don't think you're a newbie anymore. <laughs> I think you've got it, um, but that's really funny, turning it into yarn bricks, I totally get it. I really struggled with crochet and still do sometimes. Okay, she said, I would like to know what shawl designs you would suggest for noobs. That one that you designed this year was Suburban Stitcher, this is the springtime in suburbia wrap. Is amazing, but I'm a bit intimidated. What uh, would you suggest it for newbies? Can can you talk about what patterns you recommend for noobs? I'm hoping to make some baskets before the holidays, but also really want to make some doilies and shawls and blankets. I certainly have plenty of yarn to play with. <laughs> okay, I love that. So yes, I do have some suggestions. I'm getting my notes that I put down over here. So as far as good shawl patterns, crocheted shawl patterns for newbies, um, the number one that I'm going to suggest is Flatiron by TL Yarn Crafts, who's Tony Lipsy. I have made two of these, and I think this shawl design is what got me into wanting to design crochet patterns. When I first started to design stuff, I did design a crochet thing. I made my float tote, um, which I have right here. This was the first design I ever put out like as a published pattern, which is crochet. But I never thought that I would want to make any crocheted pieces that were like flowy and light and, and accessories that weren't like home homeware because I just didn't see crochet being flowy and light. I was ignorant <laughs> in that I never had seen something crocheted that looked um, that had the aesthetic that I liked. And then I found Tony, <laughs> TL Yarn Crafts, somehow on Instagram, I think. Actually, I think I found her pattern and then found her. That's how much I liked that shawl pattern. And so I have made two of them. I totally should have brought them down, but I'll put a picture in for you. Um, this is just a great, really, really simple shawl pattern. It's a little, for me, I had a tad bit of trouble starting it, just getting those like setup rows done. But once you get started, it's just a two row repeat and you just go. And I think that's really great for a beginner because you get to practice, um, you know, con keeping consistent um, increases because you do have to increase in order to make this triangular shawl. Um, and it's, I think it's just a really good way to get started because you're doing those two, that two row repeat. So once you get started, you can't really get too far off track. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but also in crochet, stitch markers are your best friend. Don't be afraid to use them. If you are always losing track of the last stitch of your row, which is what I would normally do, um, I would make my first stitch and then in the top of it, I would clip a stitch marker, work my way across, and then when I came back, I would know exactly which stitch I needed to go in last. Um, springtime in Suburbia is one of my crochet patterns. It's a really big wrap. Um, it's a pretty simple pattern. Um, I think it would be okay for you, Charity, because you said you're doing the crocheted raglan, like Granny's raglan, and I think that that is not a simple task. So I definitely think you can do Springtime and Suburbia. Um, so Springtime and Suburbia is a chevron wrap pattern. So you start, um, you get all of your stitches ready to go, and then you basically make these chevron stitches by doing increases and decreases. Just like flat iron, it is a two row repeat um, with some color changes. So it's really, really simple once you get started. But the other thing is I have a video that you only can get when you um, 
by the pattern. It's a, there's a link in there um, to the video on YouTube. It's not a public video, but only for those who get the pattern. And it goes through an entire row, how to work the row, how to use stitch markers to mark your increases and decreases. So I think with the, with the knowledge that you already have and that pattern support, you'd be totally fine to make either flat iron or um, springtime in suburbia. And again, flat iron by, is by Tony Lipsy and uh, springtime in suburbia is by Love and Stitches. Okay, I think that was the last part of that question, but I do have one more that I'm going to talk about. Okay, I am re-glossed and ready to talk about the last question here. Um, so this question is from Elizabeth, I think Elizabeth Canada, um, and of course her first name is Elizabeth. Um, she says, hi Natalie, I have kind of a strange question for you. Who is your favorite knitter? Here's a few of mine for suggestions. Andrea Mowry, Caitlin Hunter, Elizabeth Zimmerman, you, and Stephanie Pearl McPhee. Okay, hold on, Elizabeth. <laughs> when I first read that, I, I was at work and I, I said to my coworker, oh my gosh, I just got put up and put in a lineup of amazing people and my coworker is not a knitter, but she totally will listen to me explain. I was like, I just got, my name is in a line of all these amazing knitting legends. <laughs> And she just laughed at me. But Elizabeth, like that is seriously the most flattering thing I think that has happened to me in a long time. <laughs> Thank you so much. To be put up next to Elizabeth Zimmerman and Stephanie Pearl McPhee, I don't deserve that, but thank you. Okay, so she says, I know someone already has asked you for a few of your favorite knitting books, but this is kind of a more personal question. Do you have a favorite YouTube knitter, designer, author of knitting books, etc.? So I thought that that was a fun way to answer the question by going through like those different categories. Um, so I just picked those three categories that you said. I picked YouTuber, designer, and author. And it's always hard to pick just one, um, but I did. I just went with my gut and I have an explanation for all of them. So my favorite YouTuber that's a knitter is the Yarn Hoarder. Um, yarn Hoarder is uh, Amber, and Amber has had her podcast for a couple years now. And the reason Amber is my absolute favorite YouTuber, like she's the one that I, when I, even though there hasn't been a post that says she's got a new episode, I go check her channel. <laughs> like that's how much I love um, the Yarn Hoarder, and. She is. She was the very first podcast, knitting podcast I ever watched. I didn't even know knitting podcasts or crochet podcasts were a thing. I never spent really time watching stuff on YouTube or listening to audio podcasts. And so she's really what brought me into this like virtual, virtual world of knitters and crocheters. Um, and it was through a friend that suggested it to me. I watched the first episode. Um, I think she had like six episodes out. By then it was when she was starting and I watched from the beginning and I watched every episode and I'm totally hooked. Um, so Amber is a wonderful, sweet woman um, that she does her podcasts maybe once a month or so, um, but she's got a backlog, like a back catalog of episodes. If you haven't seen her before, you can go and watch them. I think you'll really enjoy them. She's got a stash of yarn that is similar to this. <laughs> That's not true. She has so much yarn in an amazing display and it's behind her in her podcasts um, and it's really epic and awesome. Okay, favorite designer. Again, I went with my gut here. I thought about people I had designed, or I'm sorry, I had uh, worked from multiple times. And I also just realized that you said knitting designer and I picked a crochet designer. So I might have to th think quick on my feet about somebody else, but my, my favorite designer is Tony Lipsy, and it's not just for her designs. Uh, Tony is the designer of the flat iron shawl that I was just talking about, but she is just an incredible businesswoman. Um, she, I, I saw her, I think I, I think I found the shawl first and then found her on Instagram, but I was just like hooked on, on all of the words, every word that she said, every bit of advice that she gave, every, um, just like the way she carries herself, the way she runs her business. She's just an incredible person. And for that, I I really looked up to her and 
loved her designs even more. They're, she always designs with her um, customer. She doesn't say customer. She, she has an avatar. I don't know. She has another word for it. Like the person that she's designing for, she's, she's got that woman like in her mind and she designs for that woman and she always makes really beautiful, classic, clean, fun pieces. She's getting really funky with color lately and I love it. Um, but she's one to watch for sure. Definitely follow her on Instagram. Um, get into her Facebook group. She is the reason that I had even have a pretend Facebook because I just wanted to watch her lives when they moved from Instagram to Facebook. And I haven't done that in a while. I need to get back into it because she's just, her personality is incredible. Okay, so knitting designer, that's my favorite. I didn't plan this ahead of time. Uh, it's hard to think about people I've knit. I've made their patterns like multiple times. I feel like that's really a tell that I like them as a designer. I don't know, I think I would probably say I follow Andrea Mowry the most. Um, I really, I mean, I'm wearing her, uh, one of her patterns now, which is maybe what made me think of that. Um, and have I knit anything else? I don't know if I've knit any other of her um, patterns. Oh my gosh, sorry, Andrea. I know who my favorite knitting designer is. I do love Andrea Mowry though, and I've taken classes, a class from her, and she is a wonderful teacher and a wonderful person. My favorite designer is Hohi Locatelli. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's hard to pick one. It's not fair. I think I made that rule up myself, but I'm picking one, and it's Hohi Locatelli because she absolutely is the style that I love. Her designs are like loose fitting very clean staples in your wardrobe i wear my boxy sweater more times every year than like anything else i love that sweater i need to make another one i need to make more hokey patterns but yeah i think hokey locatelli oh i don't know andrea maori hokey locatelli it's hard to pick but i i love i love like anytime hokey comes out with something and andrea <laughs> I'm always like just excited about it and I have cast on itis even though I don't really cast anything on you know I'm knitting a Hohi Locatelli pattern right now like a cloud is Hohi Locatelli so it's just too hard to pick <laughs> I should have thought ahead on that one okay but the last one I did pick an author ahead of time so no switching <laughs> um my favorite knitting author is Stephanie Pearl McPhee um I started reading her blog I don't know She's been blogging for longer than I've been a reader, but I did start reading it definitely in college at least, maybe even in high school. So it could have been, it could have been 10 years. Um, but yeah, I love, she's just so funny. I've read multiple books of hers. Um, I've taken a class from her as well. And that was one of the best classes. I've taken two classes. I might have taken two classes from her. I think she's been at DFW Fiber Fest for two years. And so um, always jump on an opportunity to take class from Stephanie Pearl McPhee. The amount of knowledge she has about knitting is just incredible. And it's not just like how to knit, it's like where knitting came from and like what wool is like and how to be a respectful knitter. I mean, she just knows it all and has a really good way of expressing it. Um, her gift is definitely writing and being a teacher and, and spoken word. She's just really good at it and she's so much fun. So those are my three, four, I don't know, five. <laughs> it's too hard. I tried to choose one and it, and it backfired, but um, okay. So I think that's the answer. I think that finishes up all the questions in the Ask Me thread because hopefully between this week and next week, I'll have a lot more knitting to show you instead of this week where I have not much. So therefore all of the questions. Um, but I have a couple things of just like announcements and then we will get wrapped up. So um, I have some new videos this week. I'm continuing my knit and crochet basic stitches um, tutorial and I always forget what I've called them. I think basic knits and basic crochet series. So in the basic crochet series, we are now graduated from the humble slip knot all the way up to double crochet. And then in 
the knitting series, we have gone from the slip knot again um, through casting on, knit and purl, and now we are combining knitting and purling. So in that video, you're going to see um, stockinette stitch, knitting a row, purling a row, and also ribbing, knit one, purl one. So both the, um, the double crochet or all the crochet videos are right and left-handed. All of the knitting videos are English and continental style so that you have all of those resources. You can decide what works best for you or your friend or your child or whoever is learning to knit or crochet or expand their skills. So I put on Instagram today um, the double crochet video and I was floored to learn how many people work double crochet differently than I do. It's just so interesting. Crochet is one of those things that's like I feel like too much is left for interpretation. I really like straightforward instructions. <laughs> and with crochet, you have to be so explicit because there are so many interpretations of like how to end a row. For double crochet, for example, I learned that you do a chain three and you skip a stitch because the chain counts as a stitch. And I thought that's what everybody did, but apparently not. Um, I knew there was a technique for not having like the holes and the double crochet, the three chains, but I didn't know that that many people did it. It appears that it might be the better way. So my video is showing you one technique. Of course, it's never the only way. So go out there and explore other methods and let me know what you find because I'm always interested in learning more. Okay, uh, what does this say? Oh, so also in my crochet videos, something that was really important to me is to talk about those row ends on every stitch. So single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. A lot of times a tutorial, uh, whether it's like a, an illustrated one or a video, it only talks about how to make that first row or just that one stitch. It doesn't talk about what the end of the row looks like or the beginning of the row looks like when you're coming off of the chain, when you're coming off of a new row. So I tried really hard to make sure to include as much as I could into those crochet videos. So that's what make mine, I think, a little bit um, unique as I'm really covering everything. Okay, so I am super excited because we're gearing up to go on a trip to Disney World. And uh, we've been several times this year, we're so blessed, but I'm really, really in particular excited for this one. It's just a weekend, long weekend trip. Um, but we're going to get to do several exciting things there. We're going to get to go to a Halloween party. Uh, we have costumes. I'm so excited to dress up for it. Um, we're also going to get to go to the Epcot Food and Wine, International Food and Wine Festival, um, which I have never been to before. And so I'm so excited to try all of those yummy treats. And then... Um, my husband's college football team, SMU, is playing in Florida. So we're actually gonna take a little side trip on Saturday and go watch a football game. So I am way excited. I need to go do laundry and start packing because we leave in just a couple days and I'm so pumped for it. Okay, I believe that that is it. Um, thanks for sticking around for this question heavy episode. More knitting content coming soon. Thank you for sticking around. All right. Bye.